Hello! Buildings do not stand in isolation. They are part of cities with their own political and economic dynamics. If you want to initiate a building adaptation, it is important to get a grip on the context in which it takes place. In this video, we take, you, we take a look at the bigger picture of urban redevelopment and talk about policies and real estate markets. This is an example of an urban redevelopment project called Haven City in Hamburg. This former brownfield site was used for harbour and industrial activities and became obsolescent in the last 20 years. Because the site lay partly abundant, the municipality thought it was a good idea to redevelop the area. Also, the location offered opportunities to create a mixed-use urban area right at the riverfront and close to the heart of the city. The area is still being developed with both new buildings and buildings that are being adapted. Already nowadays it has become an interesting, vibrant place where people live, work and leisure. In order to make well-informed decisions about the adaptation of buildings, we need to know more about the city's policies and markets. It involves a lot of research and analysis. First, what kind of spatial and urban policies are formulated by the municipality? Are there any housing, sustainability and economic policies that I can use to determine my chances for a building adaptation initiative? Second, how does the real estate market of the region and the city function? Is there a demand for housing, offices or retail? And is the current building supply matching the demand for space from organizations? What is a policy? Policy are statements of intent. Here you see an example of the sustainability and climate change policy of the municipality of Rotterdam. The document contains three policy objectives. The green, healthy and resilient city, cleaner energy and lower costs, and a strong and innovative economy. Within this document you can also find more specific objectives that can be of interest for building adaptation, like sustainable areas, green buildings, sustainability procurement and so on. This is really valuable information. Here you see another policy example, the so-called Structural Vision 2040 of the Municipality of Amsterdam. In the Netherlands, such visions are written by municipal planning authorities to define spatial policies and plans. In this case, Amsterdam formulated six spatial tasks. Densification, transformation, public transport, the high quality of public space and diverse use of green space and water and sustainable energy. This is great information. When you come up with a building adaptation initiative that contributes to a few of these spatial objectives, you are more likely to get cooperation by the authorities. Of course, they also want all of these ambitions to be realized and they can use you, your help to do so. So, when you initiate a building adaptation, you look for all kinds of municipal policies in order to define the opportunities. Then a policy document analysis can be of assistance. It can be a tool to search for policy statements about building adaptation, for example. You could make a good analysis by setting up a structured table. In this table you could list the type of policy document like housing, economy and sustainability, etc. Identify key policy objectives, such as a mo more homes for elderly, strengthening the city's media cluster and using more in renewable energy, and indicate possible means for policy implementation. For example, specific legislation, regulation and subsidies available for building adaptation. By doing so, you can determine the possibilities for a building and ad adaptation initiative. Another important contextual factor that can have to take into account when adapting a building is real estate markets. Real estate is property comprised of land and buildings on it. Real estate markets can be divided in the housing, office and retail market. Real estate markets are all about supply and demand and price development. When adapting the building, you determine which function, like office or housing, could possibly match supply with demand. For example, take this office market in Rotterdam. For years there has been a trend of increasing office vacancy rates. In 2016, 19.3% of office buildings were empty. 
on the one hand, this is caused by the increased supply of offices as new office buildings were constructed in the city. On the other hand, the uptake of offices was decreasing as demand for new office space during the economic crisis was low. This results in a big mismatch between office supply and demand. Take this for example. The municipality of Rotterdam left these buildings, called the Europoint Towers, and re relocated their office to the Rotterdam, a fancy new building designed by Dutch architect Rem Koolhaas. So this action increased the total supply of offices in the city and further increased the office vacancy rate. It has taken quite a while before the Europoint Towers were occupied again, which shows that the demand for offices in Rotterdam is quite low. Therefore, vacant office buildings are transformed into apartments, as there is a demand for it. This is a good example of building adaptation and a far more sustainable option, don't you think? Markets analysis tools can help you to identify a possible functional match between demand and supply. This can be done on two aggregation levels, mainly on the regional and city level. Also, you can retrieve both qualitative and quantitative data, for instance, by analyzing studies from real estate agents. On the demand side, you can investigate the preferences of people and companies for a certain location and building characteristics. In addition, you can analyze quantified data like housing sale price trends. Then, on the supply side, you can map the types of houses, offices or retail that are offered on the market and search for competing approved plans for real estate development. Quantitative data about the volume of the building stock in the city or property vacancy rates can also be of, of interest. You have learned that the context of urban redevelopment and building adaptation matters. I told you we should always analyze spatial policies and real estate markets. All in all, there's a lot of data out there that could help determine the most suitable objective and function for your building adaptation.